We're talking a lot this morning about a precious but scarce resource, one you might have missed out on last night, sleep, and how skipping sleep can affect your health badly in the long run. Many of us don't get enough. In fact, we're actually going backwards. In 2005, Canadians got an average of 8.2 hours of sleep a night. By 2013, that had fallen to seven hours. For many people, there's a more serious issue behind that lack of sleep. 40% of Canadians have a sleep disorder such as insomnia. That alone affects more than 3 million of us. Researchers in Ottawa are looking at how those sleepless nights are affecting our memories and whether a better rest could help ward off dementia. Duncan McHugh spent a night with those sleep experts to find out more. All right, come on in, Duncan. Yep. This is how it begins, my journey into the world of sleep to understand why we can't do without it. 60% of Canadians don't get the sleep that they need or the sleep that they want. It's quite a big number. Yeah. That's, that's a huge number. That over half of us are, are not getting as much sleep as we want. That's right. Fogel is halfway through a four-year research project oh, yeah. uncovering connections between sleep and memory. And a lot of what sleep is good for has to do with memory. People are really gaining a lot of interest in this uh, because there seems to be so much about sleep. The more we, we do study this, the more we find how there's uh, just so many aspects of sleep that are involved in memory processing. Dr. Andrew Lim is a neurologist at Sunnybrook Health Center. He's an assistant professor of neurology at the University of Toronto. And my goodness, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks <laughs> so pleasure. much for coming in. I can't tell you the stack of uh, sheets of paper of questions that I have. People are very interested in your area of What's work. It's a hugely important area. So. And there's getting to be so much more attention paid and research done. That's right. And, and generally, it looks pretty worrisome when it comes to lack of sleep. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, nobody gets enough sleep in our society, right? It's, uh, it's so tough. I know. Well, so listen, we're, we'll answer some of the general questions as they relate to the specifics sure. that our viewers have. So this one will lead us right into sure. a broader topic. Let's go to Nelson Hughes' question, which is, talk about how lack of sleep can elevate blood pressure, as many people still don't know. So blood pressure, but jump off on that, if you would, Dr. Lim, to the other areas of our health sure. where a lack of sleep is a bad thing. Sure. So, so we know for sure uh, that lack of sleep and certain sleep disorders like sleep apnea are associated with a higher risk of having things like high blood pressure. But the effects extend far beyond blood pressure. So we know, for instance, that folks with uh, sleep disorders like sleep apnea have a higher risk of having things like heart attacks, of having strokes, of having congestive heart failure, uh, of having uh, a risk for dementia even, things like Alzheimer's disease. Uh, so sleep really affects almost every part of the body. Why? Why is sleep so important? So sleep is this the part of your day when the body really uh, rests and recuperates. Uh, so it's a, a state uh, when your uh, stress hormones are at their lowest, so you're not stressing your body. Uh, it's a state when the brain, for instance, clears out toxins uh, from itself. Uh, it's a state when your heart isn't nearly working as hard. Uh, it's a state when your immune function uh, is resting and recuperating as well. And without all of these functions, there can be potential damage to your health. And we're seeing wide-ranging, right. far-reaching uh, effects right. negatively. Um, Rick D has a, qu a question, Rick Draper, no problem getting to sleep, but a problem staying asleep. So as a result, he gets about six hours, roughly a night of broken sleep. Sure. Um, how do you stay asleep? Sure. So there are a whole host of reasons why people might have difficulty staying uh, asleep. Um, so this can result from dysfunction of the internal body clock. So if your internal circadian rhythms, your body clock is misaligned to your sleep schedule, uh, then you'll have more difficulty either falling asleep or staying asleep. So that's one potential cause uh, for this. Uh, another potential cause are sleep disorders. Things like sleep apnea or restless legs can wake you up uh, at, at night. Uh, and then you don't get the proper so he's that's getting right. six what is the sort of the, the the wisdom today we've been running some statistics about how we used to get more than eight now yeah. it's down to seven what is the 
scientifically approved number now for what is a good night's sleep or how much sleep we should get a night? Sure, sure. Uh, so uh, the thing to remember is that the amount of sleep that we need does vary from individual to individual. On average, folks need roughly seven and a half hours of sleep a night. Okay. Uh, a little bit less if you're older, a little bit more uh, if you're younger. Okay, seven and a half. So six is not doing it. To supplement or to try to get them to sleep through the night, uh, Rick is taking an over-the-counter sleep medication um, a couple of times a week. Is this bad? So I've heard of people taking melatonin, for example. What do you think? Of, what do you advise on the over-the-counter medication? Sure. So, so what I would say is, is if you're using them relatively infrequently, no more than a few times a month, that's probably okay. Uh, two times a week might be a little hefty. Yeah, you know, but we're getting there. Okay. Uh, because the problem with these over-the-counter sleep medications, like all sleep medications, is the more you use them, the more your body gets used to them, uh, to the point where uh, you almost need the sleep medications just to get a normal night of sleep. All right. From uh, Patty Roberts, is it beneficial for people to nap? So the answer is, if you're getting enough sleep at night, you probably don't need to nap. But if you're not getting enough sleep at night, or if your sleep at night is uh, fragmented or disrupted in some way, then you're better off napping than not. Okay. Oh, well, that's good to know. So does it count in the overall? Say you're getting five hours at night, but then you're napping one hour in the day. Do you collectively have like a six hour, <laughs> or does it work like that? So, so I think getting six hours of, of sleep in one stretch would be better right. than breaking it up. But if you're only getting five hours at night, you're better off getting that extra hour during the day. Okay, I have one more this time. Uh, we'll get to so many more, but uh, sure. this is a question from Sonia. And again, people who don't get enough during the week because of schedules, mm -hmm. for example, our team, uh, does banking sleep work? So then suddenly you sleep a lot more on the weekend, get seven, eight, nine, right. maybe 10 hours, woohoo. Right. Uh, how do you, what is the thinking on that? Yeah, so, so for sure, for sure, if you've, if you normally sleep an appropriate amount, so if you're normally getting seven, eight hours of sleep, then if you have the odd night of sleep, of less sleep, of sleep deprivation, you withstand that a lot better. Right. So in that sense, there is some value in just having healthy sleep habits most of the time. Uh, on the other hand, it, it isn't as though you could all of a sudden sleep, you know, 14 hours uh, a, a night for multiple nights uh, and have that work. I mean, for most folks, you just simply can't sleep that long. Well, you'd be surprised because I, I can I can be case in point because we sleep <laughs> in the mornings very shortly, Jen. Right. But I can really really pack it in on the weekend for right. a few days, and and in that case, I mean, is there anything it's, it's beneficial probably a, yeah, I mean, in it's terms probably a sign of that you're just not sleeping enough? Uh, well, most I think of the time. that's exactly yeah. right. But does that help you know sort of forestall some of the negative effects of lack of sleep in the other five days? Yeah. So I mean, you're, you're better off getting that long catch up sleep. Uh, than not, but of course you're still better off, yet better off, oh my uh, sleeping seven, seven and a half hours. hours. Yeah. This is the desired figure that none of us are getting. Kelly Nesbitt writes, do you have a recommendation to help relieve symptoms of restless leg syndrome? Sure. So sometimes restless legs can be related to things like vitamin deficiencies. So we know, for instance, iron deficiency can be an important cause of restless legs. And if you're iron deficient, just getting enough iron in your diet can make a huge difference to restless legs. What is restless legs? for somebody who doesn't have that. Sure, so restless legs is a sleep disorder where your legs become intensely restless just as you're about to go to bed and when you're lying in bed. You just feel a real need to move the legs. You feel a lot better if you get up from bed and walk around, but the moment you chop back into bed, uh, you start to feel this intense restlessness uh, all, you know, all night long. Okay. And, uh, and your bed partner may notice that you're kicking your legs a lot in your sleep as well. Okay, so if you're iron deficient, that was one area. Are there other solutions you'd offer to Kelly and Others? Sure. So, so I mean, I, a lot of restless legs is actually fundamentally kind of genetics, and, and there, there are medical causes as well, like, okay. like, like you know, kidney dysfunction and that sort of thing. They need to be checked out. Uh, but iron is a big one. Uh, making sure you have enough vitamins like B12 is another uh, big one. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and also just making sure you don't have one of these other causes. So it's very common in pregnancy, for instance, and other medical All right. uh, uh, conditions. But if there's an underlying condition, it might be something you want to talk to your doctor about. That's right. About. So if you have restless legs, talk to your doctor about okay. it. Make sure there's nothing else going on. And then make sure you have a healthy diet. All right. Important. All right. Uh, from Karen. Charlong, thank you. We've talked about how most of us are getting too little sleep, sure. but here's a good one. Can you sleep too much? Yeah, so 
it, it isn't so much that sleeping too much is bad for you. So, so the sleep per se is, and, but if you're sleeping a ton. She has 14 hours. It, it, it might be a sign that there's something underlying, like a sleep disorder uh, that's going on. So, so if you have no underlying sleep disorder, if you're otherwise healthy, then it's pretty much impossible to sleep too much. But if you are sleeping a whole ton, it's probably worth getting it checked out. Okay, another good piece of advice. Uh, here is actually from Chris, uh, Chris Murphy, with whom we work in the morning. <laughs> Great question, and it's actually sparked a whole long social media conversation. Yeah, sure. What's the ideal amount of time between having dinner and going to bed? Because if you eat too late, often yeah. you can't get to sleep, or it's a very fitful right, sleep. So right. what do you want to... What do you want to do in terms of a gap between your last meal? Yeah, so we, so we like to say at least a couple of hours between a large meal and going to bed. The big issue there is if you eat a big meal and then lie down, you can get heartburn or reflux, and that can really disrupt your sleep. Uh, so, so a couple hours gap before having like an enormous meal and, and sleep is probably good. That's probably why, or one of the reasons why people say eat more earlier in the day, right? right? You, you have uh, um, among others, yeah. Time to digest. Uh, a question from Chris. Thank you very much. Out in New Brunswick this morning. Why why can I always fall asleep anywhere as soon as my head hits a pillow? And uh, in Chris's case, his wife takes an hour or two to fall asleep. Sure. So that's an interesting question, but it also will be helpful to talk about how you fall asleep more quickly. Right, right. So you know, when it comes to having difficulty falling asleep, this can be due to a whole host of problems. It can be due to things like bad sleep habits, bad sleep hygiene. Uh, it can be due to sleep disorders like restless uh, uh, legs. Uh, so, uh, you know, oftentimes, this sort of a mismatch between spouses sometimes reflects a mismatch in their underlying biological clock. So that some people are kind of night owls and like to stay up mm -hmm. late. There are some people that are uh, morning larks and will like to go to bed early and wake up early. Uh, so it's not unusual in my own clinic where I'll have a couple come in and you'll, you'll see two people with completely different biological <laughs> clocks. And it isn't that there's a right or wrong answer, right? Uh, so it just might be that this is their own preference. Um, but it makes for a little bit of it discord. It makes for separate bedrooms is what <laughs> it makes right. in some cases. Okay, we have, as I'm going to try to do, squeeze in one more from Lena. It's, is getting to sleep at a certain hour important? My mom used to always say, an hour before midnight is worth two after. Yeah. You know, I don't know if that, that adage is true, but she usually says the time to get to sleep between 10 and 12 is very important. Is that true? Yeah, so the answer is you want to go to bed at the time that your biological clock will give you the best sleep. For many people, this is in fact around from 10 to 12, but it varies from person to person. So if you're a morning lark, it may be that 9 to 11 is kind of like the magic time. Uh, on the other hand, if you're a real night owl, it may be that, you know, 12 till 1 is, is, the, is the golden hour. Okay. Uh, so the answer is the timing of sleep totally matters, uh, but it varies from person to person. Isn't that so interesting? There is no hard and fast rule in all of this. The that, bottom line is we right. need more. We need more quality sleep. Right. But it does defend, depend on the person. That's right. Oh, thanks for coming in. Oh, it's my pleasure. I think we could do this again sometime. <laughs>